Open the pod bay doors. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. What would you do with a brain if you had one? Do? Why, if I had a brain, I could... Miles per hour. I could wild away. Six. Fifty-six. First of all, tell me a little bit about what you guys do. So, I'm the CAT program manager at Austin Pets mm -hmm. Alive. So, I heard a round of applause earlier. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> Austin Pets Alive will take in and rehome about 4,000 cats a year. Uh, we are the largest no kill rescue um, in the city of Austin. We are, of course, Austin is the largest no kill city in the United States. Let's give ourselves a hand. Yeah, please give yourselves a hand. Um, so we are a shelter of last resort. We're taking in about 4,000 cats a year, who um, the vast majority of which need some sort of rehabilitation or advanced medical care. Mm -hmm. So we provide that, and then we adopt them to you wonderful cat-loving folks who come and adopt them. And people, there's probably cats that people could go and Right now, there are cats pick available up. for pickup. Like wonderful cats, like cats who are not cats. like these cats. We have we we have some of those if that's what you're interested in as well. We have we have the. I don't know Wellington. Who seemed I would take a well. I would take like Wellington. He's a nice cat. Yeah, I didn't see a whole lot wrong with Wellington. <laughs> and Dr. Kim, what do you do? Um, I own the Cat Hospital of Austin. I've been a cat-only veterinarian for 17 years. Um, and I actually have tried to become more integrative in medicine in general. So I'm board certified animal chiropractor as well as knowing a lot about feline behavior, feline medicine, and I use a lot of herbal remedies and things like that in addition to being a Western medicine practice too. So I try to combine it all. And I, I do also work with groups like Austin Pets yes. Alive and Texas Humane Heroes and Austin Siamese Rescue, just a few of them. But I mean, I will tell you all, it is kitten season. I have more kittens than I've ever had for adoption right now. And I usually only like have a couple here and there that get dropped off and need homes. So I can only imagine that y'all are inundated right now. This seems to be a worse year than we've had yes. in previous years from everybody I speak to. So if you're thinking of adopting, now is the now time, is please. The time. <laughs> and and people can adopt. People can go to austinpetsalive.com. Yep, dot org. Dot org. Dot yes. org. Uh, you can come down and see us on Cesar Chavez mm -hmm. over by the high school. We're open every day from 1130 to 7. Great. So, and your practice is called? The um, it's Cat Hospital Cat of Hospital. Austin. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we are open Monday through Friday from 7.30 in the morning until 6. Great. All right, now for the pressing questions. <laughs> and, and the audience, you guys, you know, think about your questions as well. But I've, uh, I've been a cat person for 58 years, I think, maybe. Um, and I've, are cats, really as smart as I think they are because I think they're so smart and I fool myself into thinking I'm pretty smart too and there's nothing there's <laughs> nothing that I can find to make me think that cats aren't super smart are they smart some of them some of I believe some they of them. are yeah. I believe they're tremendously smart yeah um, my dog loving wife might disagree but <laughs> you know we have integrated household as well cats and dogs and I think the cats boss the dogs around frankly yeah. So are, is there, are there actually studies to prove that cats are hyper-intelligent beings? There's, there's studies that, that show that they're a lot smarter than we give them credit for uh -huh. sometimes. Um, and there's one floating around that's been hitting Facebook and everything re recently from National Geographic. Um, and you may have seen it pop up on your Facebook feed in the last day or two. And it's about the DNA evidence of how cats evolved mm -hmm. to be a oh, yeah, domesticated yeah. species. Um, and so we've looked at DNA going back to about 4,400 years ago when cats first allowed themselves to be domesticated. So <laughs> this is a, one of the few species in the world that domesticated themselves because it suit them to do so. <laughs> so unlike dogs, which we brought in, we put in cages and we bred them to do our specific tasks, cats came to us and said, hey, these people are growing crops and luring in mice. Um, I'm gonna go buddy up with these dummies. They're gonna <laughs> let me in the house every night. I think I'll allow this to go on. And <laughs> DNA speaking, that cat from 4,400 years ago yeah. is literally no different than the cat that's in our household right now. 
So is it that they're very smart? Or is it that they're a wildly successful species? Or both? Or maybe that we're not as smart as we think we are. That, I think, <laughs> I think I'll, yeah. <laughs> because we got played by these, by these pets who come over and they pretend, like they act cute. And this is like a, I have this with, you know, Mr. Tittles and Lucy all the time. They'll, <laughs> they'll act like they're so cute and loving and then you feed them and then where are they? <laughs> mm -hmm. They yeah, are very good at getting what they want right. mm -hmm. and doing what they want. Right. Um, I noticed another thing about cats, and I'm gonna don't worry, I'm gonna open the floor for questions. But uh, this is like stuff I'm, I've been dying to know. So it, it seems like cats, like our, our two cats, like will not like cuddle, but they're but they like each other and they'll like sleep, you know, a, a foot apart. But that's like as close as they get. But I think they really like each other, actually. But they don't like cuddle. They're not, you know, even they're not like war like cuddle up for mammal warmth ever. But they just they'll like lie on the couch next to one another. Is it is it typical for cats to be kind of? We I think we think of cats. Our sort of idea about what cats are is that they're sort of a little bit finicky or sort of off-putting. They're 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 not the same kind of warm, lovable creatures that dogs are. Is that is that the case? Well, I will say cats are social animals, yeah. but they also are kind of like people in that everybody has their own personality. And so you're going to have two people that get along really well together, and you're going to have two people that no matter what you do, they're never going to get along. And dogs, I think, just kind of are easier to mold into what you want them to, whereas cats, it is very personality driven. Mm -hmm. I think I'd also add that if they're on the couch together sleeping within a foot or two of each other, they're yeah. very comfortable with one another, even if they don't want to be snuggled up against one another. That's good to know, and that's a load off my mind, and I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering if anybody in the, in the audience has questions. Oh, please do. Who, who, who might have questions? Right over here. Um, so I don't know if this is true or not, but cats' whiskers, are they long enough so that way cats can figure out what spaces they can fit into. I've heard this before, but I don't know if it's true. They do use their whiskers as a sensory organ. Um, it does help them get around. They're fine without them if they lose one, but it is part of their sense. Yeah, I'd agree. There's, um, I don't know for sure if that is fact or, or fiction, I'm sorry, but um, I think it's, it's a lot of sensory going through those whiskers. Um, if you look at cats who are blind and whatnot, they can still navigate a room perfectly great and they're using those whiskers a lot. Um, Dr. Kim, I'm sure you could agree, it's sometimes it's hard to pick out a cat in a room that's blind. You won't even know so often because they have so many ex other senses that they can navigate with and the whiskers are definitely a big part of it. So they have like daredevil like super hearing too, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so like, um, you might say the whiskers are sort of like these hypersensitive curb feeler kind of things where they really, you know, they know if they're about to run into something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and this is what a bit of the lore that I came up with. The Egyptians who worshipped cats, as we know. Sure? Um, the Egyptians felt that cats stored the sunlight in their eyeballs. Like, so when the sun went away, they didn't know about, like, you know, the, you know Earth's rotation. When the sun went away, they thought that the cats just stored it, speaking of humans being dumb, they thought that cats <laughs> stored the sunlight in their eyeballs. Like, that's crazy. But that, but that does make me, like, I always heard when I was a kid, it was like, oh, no, cats can see in the dark. They can totally see in the dark. Is that true? They can see a lot better than we can in the dark. Yeah. Certainly. That's not saying much for me, because I don't know where the hell I am right now. <laughs> So they, I've they just seen have lots of lights. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah, they're, good. They're definitely nocturnal, though, so they've got much better eyesight than we do. Sure, um, sure. Is it cones or receptors that they have? They have more rods than More cones. rods. Cones are your color sensors. Rods are your sure. light dark. Yeah, story of my life. Uh, <laughs> anybody else uh, have a, a question they might uh, like to ask? Right back here, yeah. Has he, to your knowledge, ever had any kind of traumatic experience with water? I don't know. I just watched him for a while. 
<laughs> Which cat was it? Do you remember his name? Um, Milburn, he was an FIV, he is an FIV kitty. Uh, big orange and white? Big orange cat. Yeah. Aww. 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 <laughs> what is he doing when you're in the shower? Like, can you describe the yowling and... Well, it's been getting more, it's been getting more desperate, so... Um. <laughs> he stands outside and he, he, he looks in for a minute, he yells, and he goes, he sits outside, and he'll just kind of go, I don't, I don't make the noise. Make the noise, it helps. <laughs> I think we're gonna need to hear the sound though. Yeah, I think it would. Mm -hmm. I think that's yeah. <laughs> Very helpful. <laughs> what does he do when you get out? Same thing for a few minutes. Uh, he'll, he he'll make some smaller meows. <laughs> does he ever try and come in the shower with you? He'll just poke his head in, but he won't oh, go okay. any further. If any water comes out of him, he's very upset about it. <laughs> Does it matter which is taking a shower, or is it just anybody taking a shower? No, it doesn't have to. A lot. Well, that's, uh, what, we don't know why this happens. I, I, I don't have an easy answer on why. I do have some thoughts on how to help him cope, but. Um, Kitty Valium, yeah? Well, yeah, I mean, there's, there's different equivalents of that. Um, I, I can't really dispense medical advice without actually seeing him, so I'm sorry to that. What a ripoff. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, there are some natural things that can be done, like, it, well, okay, close him out of the bathroom. That's kind of, he's just gonna caterwaul on the other side. Um, but also doing things like a lavender diffuser maybe while you're in there to kind of help calm him down. That's a possibility of something that'll work. There's also these little plugins called Feel Away that help with anxiety control, and those are some easier things to try to see if that would help him. One thing I might add to that too is, see, does Milburn have some favorite foods? Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know what's not his favorite. Okay, well, <laughs> pick, pick something that Milburn really, really loves and dispense that while you're showering and make kind of, and you can do it in the bathroom or out, just outside of the bathroom, whatever he's comfortable with, but if you can try and make showering Milburn's happy time <laughs> to maybe, you know, take away some, if he's feeling any anxiety to kind of take that away and replace it with something that's positive so he's not, I mean, I, again, I'm only speculating what's going through Milburn's head while you're showering, <laughs> but if he's having anxiety about it, replacing it with something positive might distract him and help him reassociate that with something that's not traumatic. That sounds like a, an answer a cat would give. <laughs> <laughs> they're very self-serving. Is there some food he really likes? <laughs> give him that food. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Which brings me to this whole thing, like this whole idea that people who are around cats a lot, like, you know, us, like, frankly, yeah, let's face it, all of us, that there's some, I heard that there might be some parasite <laughs> like some brain parasite. This sounds like Cronenbergian and terrible, but like <laughs> the bacterial culture or something that gets into your brain that directs you to serve the cat. Toxoplasmosis. That's what it's it called. We're on the okay. toxoplasmosis wagon. Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, we're on the. Yeah. <laughs> we're on the toxoplasmosis <laughs> wagon again. <laughs> What, what, what is that just made up stuff? Gonna, what is bring that? Up the bird people next? <laughs> I don't know about the bird people. Let's stick with the cat thing. That's all I can handle right now. Is toxoplasmosis like a real thing? And it is a real parasite. Yeah. It is found everywhere in the earth and the ground, um, as well as in cat poop. Yeah. But the big Which thing is, it's not just a cat thing. No, it's not. You have a better chance of getting it while gardening, outside than yeah. scooping Raw your litter box. Carry right. It regularly. So. so it doesn't, but it doesn't like make you a servant like th of the cat. No, it will make you crazy and you can die of, die of it if you're immune compromised though. So you don't want to have it. Okay. But you're not going to get it by owning a cat and being a normal human being. Generally, with a cat. it's not considered a risk for a normal immune system person. If you're not on an autoimmune drug or anything like that, it's not a risk. And again, 
more likely to get it from raw vegetables. Sure. It is a risk for pregnant women. Mm -hmm. If you are pregnant, you should not necessarily scoop the litter box. So, hey, for all those women out there that might be pregnant, get the man to scoop the litter box and you're good. Good luck with that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, well, that's good to know. I feel like I touched a nerve with the toxoplasmosis here, but I appreciate it. It's good to know. Like, I imagine people have asked about it before, probably. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> I wonder if we have any more questions from the audience. I see a hand right back there. It's hard to see, so right back there. So if you have a cat that's neutered or spayed, are they happier outside or inside or a mixture of both? Because my roommate has inside cats, and they are the most miserable creatures on earth. So that might just be them. <laughs> yeah, totally individual to each cat. They're mean. They hate everyone on earth but him. <laughs> but I think he likes that. <laughs> some people do. Some people yeah. like come in and they'll show me the naughtiest cat you have. We love those people. Um, I think it's totally individual to every cat, whether they want to be an indoor cat, an outdoor cat, or a mixture of the two. Um, I will say that th having cats indoors, solely indoors, is a very American concept. Um, as we saw from our British film here, cats are outside in the rest of the world. Um, cats have been outside for upwards of 40,000 years. so. Um, there are risks to being outside, for sure. All kinds of things that they can get into and pick up. Um, there are risks to being a stro solely indoor cat as well. Um, boredom and overweight and diabetes and lots of things. Um, developing neurosis. So there's risks to both sides. Um, and there are really good ways to keep cats safe if you're going to allow outdoor access now with lots of catios and leashes and harness. So you do have some flexibility on how you want to do that if you want to let kitty go outside. And I will honestly say I actually advocate for a cat to be indoor for the safety purposes, but they can very, very truly get bored being inside. Um, so you do have to find environmental enrichment for them if they're indoors. Your cats that you're describing there probably are unhappy because they don't have enough to do. You can actually Google the Indoor Cat Initiative and it's got all sorts of information on there of good ways to keep your cat happy while they're indoors and that actually is a really good way to keep them safe and keep them actually better behaved and happy. Uh, environmental enhancements meaning? like um, They like getting into different heights so cat trees are wonderful for sure. that. Um, there's different little shelving that some people elect to put up in their households or actually there are things like cat videos, interactive cat toys, there's a whole slew of things to help keep your cat happy and indoors. So those like cat video, that's a real thing. People actually like cats will it's watch a real that. Thing. They love Anybody it. Anybody ever do that before? Like put on one of these cat videos? It's all those games yeah. you can get on your iPad yeah. and cats can play. Okay, this is good. I gotta look into mm -hmm. this. It's a thing. I will say my cat won't play the, the iPad game though. I couldn't get him to do it. But <laughs> Yeah, well. N never can't like I said, independent minded with these cats. Right over here, yeah, Bennett. <laughs> So my friend has a cat that I have never successfully pet. Not a once. Like it will scratch me, it will bite me, it will do all this stuff. It will sleep on me after I fall asleep. Mm -hmm. What's up with that? Well, you're warm. Yeah. <laughs> Is there a large warm surface area on your body, possibly? Yeah. <laughs> Is that the explanation? Yeah, and safe when you're, you're sleeping. Yeah. You're warm and safe, and yeah, he probably sleeps on your chest. Yeah, so he can look down on you, and if uh, you're going to open your eyes and be a threat, he's out of there right away, but... You mentioned cat neurosis, so that's a real thing. I had a cat one time who, I, you know, I could pet her, and then all of a sudden she just freak out and just start scratching me. Is that a common thing? Thankfully, not that common. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a common thing, but I will say... I have found a lot of cats that will do that that actually have pain in mm -hmm. certain areas, which is what made me go through the chiropractic training. I see. Um, so a lot of cats that are that way, it's not necessarily a mental thing, it's a physical thing. You might have arthritis or something like that, mm -hmm. yeah. Arthritis or have you ever been to a chiropractor? Okay, sometimes you will have certain areas, like right now I'll be honest with you, I picked this seat because I can't turn my head very well that mm -hmm. way because I have to go to the chiropractor. Mm -hmm. um, but they do have little areas in their spine that can get knocked 
out of oh, proper gosh. alignment and then they don't get as flexible and female cats when you scratch them above their tail and they're bite in the air a lot of times that's not that's not something that's funny it's because they actually are hurting there and i picked female because a lot of times they get out of alignment in that area during things like spay surgery and it's not intentional it's just the way we have them positioned when they're getting spayed and occasionally their little tailbone area gets a little out of place how interesting yeah. so do a little chiropractic maneuver and they're back in place and good to go is that why cats frequently don't like it you can pet them but if you touch their tail they're just like uh leave me alone some cats love it it's again it's, everybody's yeah. totally different yeah there's some cats they like their belly being scratched and pet and some cats are gonna what's the weirdest what's the weirdest little, little thing that you guys have run into with a cat that was just like cat just love what cat would love that and the cat loved that oh my god every day every day there's something bizarre um I've had some cats who would like to be vegan if I gave them the opportunity. Um, Can't do that. I know, yeah, <laughs> we're, I won't let them, but right. um, there's one in particular that will eat corn, like the husks from corn and any type of vegetable mm -hmm. and, or plant that comes into her territory. Right. Um, any gluten-free cats? No, no gluten-free. Um, no. She does prefer GMO-free, but, yeah. but gluten <laughs> she's okay with. Um, they're, they're just super unique and every single one is totally different. Um, mentioning kind of the pain and some of these behavior yeah. weird questions um, I always look for what what is what is unique about a cat and what is instinctual about a cat that's mm -hmm. making it behave a certain way so why is he sleeping on you because you're warm it's as, it's as simple as that you know um, why are we why is Milburn harassing you in the shower he's probably worried that something you know maybe somebody's hurting you in the shower and he's but if we look at DNA not changing over the last mm -hmm. 4400 years um, I think when we're looking at why a cat behaves a certain way we've got to take into account this is very much a wild animal that we're letting live in our home and um, you know certainly it's domesticated to us now some of them most of them um, but there's a way there's a reason they're behaving mm -hmm. a certain way um, and I'm sure Dr. Kim can talk about this too, when we get people coming in saying, oh, he's just being spiteful, he's mad at me, that kind of a thing. That's never, that's never what it is. There's it's something going on. Anthropomorphizing. Exactly, yeah, yeah. exactly. exactly. Um, so we look at that a lot when we have people returning cats or we're trying to help cats through a behavior issue. Um, there's always a reason why your cat is behaving the way that it is. It may not be conducive to what we want it to do, but there's a reason. Sure. So if you can identify that root reason of why your cat is behaving a certain way, then we can try and fix things. And something that goes to instinct, but also one of the stranger things that I've seen, um, cats sometimes will eat things that don't go all the way through their system and they shouldn't eat. And um, I had one cat that ate, he had 13 surgeries throughout his life because he ate so many different things that he wasn't supposed to eat. And one of those things was a fur coat from a Barbie. Oh boy. <laughs> and I felt really bad for him because it really kind of looked like a mouse. Sure. You know, it's <laughs> sure. just, he couldn't pass it through. So, yeah. you know. If you want weird story that kind of goes with our theme tonight, um, we have had a couple cases where owner has passed away in the household and cats have survived on the owner let's, so mo let's move on That's guys let's move on <laughs> let's move on there's dogs no need to get into too. that dogs will do that as well yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let me, let, let's get another question from the ice and let's just can can we just not have that last 30 yeah. seconds in our lives <laughs> we'll stop at the barbie coat <laughs> <laughs> barbie coat was the last thing we talked about okay yeah. moving on right over here um great cat and he is voluntarily an inside cat he decided he wanted air conditioning and but uh he's 23 hours a great cat and you can pet him and he'll jump on your lap and watch tv with you he's a great cat but he has one hour of wild i don't know why and it's a different time every day he just starts running around insanely and i had a, a friend who had a cat who also did that is that like a normal cat thing that just one hour of just Insane movement. <laughs> um, how old is this kitty? I'd say he's about seven now, but he's is always done it. Okay. Um, cats do sleep large periods of time, but they do need to have some activity in their life. Um, it varies from going wild and crazy to just playing a little bit here and there because they're really lazy. Um, but 
that kind of goes back to the keeping your cat happy and having something to do. Um, so having like an interactive play session with him, you can put him on a schedule by him knowing, oh, this is my playtime. So I'm gonna go get to play with mom right now. And then it can be a little bit more controllable so it's not complete wild and crazy time at that 24th hour. Yeah, hey, I mean, he's not destroying anything. And he does torture his companion cat. That's what his hobby is. So I think, I think he's engaged, you know. I can play with him. He's very good with other people when they come in to visit. It's just this wild moment that for himself. So like Dr. Kim said, they do sleep most of the day. Um, and there's some research I saw recently, you know, the zoomies, when an animal will get the zoomies and just race around like that mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, there was some research pointing to that the zoomies are actually a leftover instinctual thing from that pent up hunting energy where they're doing quick sprints here and there and racing and attacking and then running to another area. Um, so again, if you kind of look at the root reason why a cat may be behaving that certain way. Uh, like Dr. Kim said, they love routine, so if you can get him on a routine where this is play hour, if his, if his Zoomy session is disrupting your sleep or at a time that's not good in the day for you, if you can get Kitty on a good routine for an hour a day that works for you to get that out of his system and just use up some of that pent up energy, um, and even if you can think of ways to entertain him while you're not home, while you're at work all day, one thing that I like to do is hide food all along the house so they can go hunting for their, for their prey and make them go on a little scavenger hunt around the house every day for their food. So that's one e cheap, easy way to keep Kitty entertained while you're at work all day. And also to like have your cats tear up every, yeah. <laughs> every like <laughs> bookshelf and everything in your house probably. So that's a tip. <laughs> it actually helps keep them thin to a certain extent. Oh, totally. I believe it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've noticed that, like, when my cat does that, I'm like, did you, Tittle, did you just poop? Like, when he goes flying around the house. It's like he poops and he's so excited that he just poops. Mm -hmm. Is that normal? <laughs> I see that a bit, yeah. Okay, all right. <laughs> I've seen it happen. Good to know. Yeah. And then the other thing, I'm sorry, I know we probably got at least one other question. Um, when the cats like are looking out the window and they see like a blue jay or something and they start going mm -hmm. <laughs> what's up with that chittering yeah, yeah. that's called chittering that's a hunting, yeah. that's a hunting yeah. behavior um, while I was in vet school I had the pleasure of actually working with some large wild cats like a cougar and the cougar was a four-month-old cougar and it would do that whenever we were starting to pull her food out to eat it was like she was hunting her food I will say it's much scarier when it's <laughs> a 40 pound cougar, yeah. <laughs> but it is normal instinctual for them. That's part of their hunting. No. And has anybody ever done a study on what cats dream about? We see them dreaming in there. I don't know, you know what they, I don't think there's a study on what they're dreaming about, but we do they're know not that talking, they do huh? dream. Yeah, 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 we know that they dream. Yeah. We have no way of like seeing into no. their dream world, possibly putting on like a VR headset it, it, and it dreaming be. along with our cats it could or anything. It frightening though. I'm willing to give it a shot. I would like to yeah. see my cats dream. It might be a fun computer game. Is there, if there's any way I can sign up to see my cat's dreams with a VR headset, I would like to do that. Just noting, if anybody sees this on YouTube or anything when we post the video, <laughs> I would like to try that. Okay, in sensory you know, deprivation tank. Right over here, yes. So have there been any studies done on catnip and kind of what cats are experiencing while they're tripping on catnip? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have specifics on has there been a study or, or not. I will say there are some cats that are very sensitive to catnip and there are other cats that are not sensitive to it whatsoever. Um, it is thought back from like some of my herbal remedy studies that there is a certain healing power in the catnip um, and there are certain psych sensors where it hits certain parts of the brain and it does make them a little bit more loopy um, but it's all dependent on whether or not the cat is sensitive to it or not and that sensitivity is genetic from what we seem to understand right now mm -hmm. they have a receptor for it yeah either they do or they don't or it's sensitive right. or not sensitive so that's why some cats are just oblivious to catnip and the others lose their minds do they also have a sensor for like oranges I know if, I, if I'm eating an orange and there's an orange peel and my cat will come and try to smell it and just go whoa no yeah, I think no. that's just having a much better sensory 
system right. than you do. They're trying. Yeah, they're trying to tell us, don't eat that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's bad for you. Right. It's it's more fattening than you think. Is what I think they're <laughs> well, trying. Well, they to actually make. can't metabolize citrus very well. Their their livers don't process it. They actually are very smart about knowing what's toxic to them and what's not. Mm -hmm. They're not brilliant. They still will get into toxins, but they are really smart about knowing most of the things that they shouldn't be eating. I've heard that uh, purring is a healing mechanism for cats. I've also heard it that like we don't quite understand why cats purr. Are, are there theories about why cats purr? Lots of theories. I don't know if any have been mm -hmm. definitively proven or not. So there are some theories that um, it releases endorphins. Mm -hmm. So um, there's also kind of a myth that purring is just super happy cats are purring. Um, I'm sure Dr. Kim can tell you lots yeah, of cats sure. purr where they're in pain as sure. well. And so there's kind of one theory is that they're releasing endorphins uh, during that period to help with pain. Um, there's some theories that suggest that the frequency of the purr can regenerate and help uh, grow bone. So there's, there's lots of stuff kind of floating out there. Yeah, I mean, the most common theory that I was taught in vet school is that because the moms purr as a sensation for them to find her better, it's kind of a throwback to a self-soothing mechanism that they develop because they're so geared in when they're kittens to go towards mom's purr. So then they learn to purr back, and then as they get older, it's still either a happy or a self-soothing mechanism. Um, I see a, a hand right over here. Um, so I feed all the feral cats around my house. Thank you. Are you spaying and neutering them? I uh, yeah, yes. can TNR them. Yay. Awesome. I've, I've been working with uh, probably like eight of them over the last year and gotten most of them out. Uh, I don't think so. You're <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, like, And most of them I can get pretty close to at this point. One of them in particular uh, has gone from immediately running and hissing every single time to like alternating between meowing and hissing at me. Yeah. And I can get within a couple feet of him now. Is it? Is there any hope of that of ever getting to just meowing and like actually touching him? Yeah, for sure. Um, so I've I've I started in cat rescue doing TNR and there's the lights and working with outdoor community cats um, and I've got barn cats of my own um, so lots of them I can touch I can pet I can pick up I can do whatever I want if you come over to my house you're not getting anywhere near my cat um, what the cat has learned is that you're the food guy and you've come by twice a day for two years now and you have not tried to murder that cat once <laughs> and all you've done is bring food and so all right I'll give you a pass I'll meow I've, I've accepted you a little bit into the colony, um, and that trust e will either continue to grow or it won't. Some cats are never going to trust you any more than that. Some will say, this food guy is really great. Um, I'm going to go ahead and totally warm up to him. Um, but it's, it's not uncommon at all that even feral cats will allow their usual caretaker into their little inner circle a little bit and, and warm up to him. Um, so I think we are going to have to actually wrap it up here. I see one more question. Um, right, uh -huh. We have a three-year-old, and he still likes to play in the litter box when it's clean. Is he ever going to outgrow that? Um, sometimes it can be the litter that you're using. Um, have you tried changing the litter brands? Okay. Um, doesn't do it when it's dirty, dirty though, no. right? No, only when it's clean. <laughs> there are some cats that actually yeah. just like, hey, I've got a clean litter box. I've got a fresh place to go. Um, I can't promise he will grow out of that. Do you have anything? No, to add I to don't. That? The the guys who just like to dig seem to just like to dig, and it's again back to this instinctual thing of we have to bury our feces so that predators don't find us and we don't lure predators back to our kittens and that kind of a thing. Um, but I think it's just back to one of those instinctual things that I am a wild cat. I like to dig. I like to hunt. I like to run around and be inappropriate sometimes. I want to get those words on a t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to wrap it up. But I, I, I keep coming up with these questions. Forgive me, everybody, please. So my girlfriend calls it making biscuits mm -hmm. when the cat gets up there and does like, <laughs> I call it kneading. Why do they do that? It stimulates milk production on mama. I haven't noted that to be the case. 
It goes back to what I was saying about the purring, though. It's another self-soothing mechanism. I see. So something they learn when they're kittens. And right, if you okay. watch kittens on mama, they're doing that the whole time. And it's thought it stimulates milk production. But that's a really happy time, I assume, yeah. when you're a kitten and you're nursing and mama's there and sure, all your sure. siblings are there. So I will so. say that is one that if they're doing that, they usually are pretty happy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Well, I'm pretty happy, too. I'm, and I'm happy you guys joined us. And I'm happy that all these great cat people joined us. Yeah. And I'm, ha I'm happy there was like five or six laughs in the movie, which really kind of bailed us out on that. So I appreciate that. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. It's been great meeting you guys. And I hope that people, there are probably a lot of people like me that have cats or are thinking about getting a cat or maybe had a cat before. This is the way to do it. Not some pet store where you go, it's like, it's awful to go, to go and buy like bred cats in a pet store. Like these, there are cats who are capable of giving us such love mm -hmm. in our lives and they can come and get them from Austin Pets Alive and they'll have a great vet they can go to. Well, and I do have 11 kittens that need homes. Yeah. They have hundreds <laughs> of kittens that need homes. Thousands. So, yes. And they'll be purring and kneading and mm -hmm. maybe even yelling when you're in the shower. But or so. scratching and attacking if that's right. what you're into. Yeah, yeah. We have all kinds. So wonderful things. And thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank we really you. appreciate it. Yeah.